all right guys welcome back and in this video we're gonna see the fourth challenge in web category of red pawn and that would be blueprint so blueprint is also i would say it's a nice challenge but you have to be very careful when you're attempting challenges like these so um, blueprint what this challenge does is that it exploits a vulnerability in found in lodash which is the prototypal pollution so you could see that just like ghast we have the source code of this particular thing so we have the blueprint one.tar.gz file with us so let's just go ahead and open this so i'm gonna open by just doing tar xvzf and blueprint.tar.gz and you're going to see that we again get a package.json which is useless for us and a blueprint.js file so just open this blueprint.js file inside vs code and we should be good to go so once we do that what we'll immediately find is all these templates and bunch of stuff but the crux of the problem lies in the following or actually let me just walk you through or what what this application does so you could just go ahead and create a blueprint you just have to enter some sort of content you can choose if it's public or not let's say if it's public i create a blueprint i get a unique url associated with it and if it is public it would be shown on the home page right that is obviously specific to your particular user and if you want you can just go ahead and not make it public and you'll still get the same result same url but this time for your particular user it won't be shown on the home page right so the thing here is that whenever you create actually let me just go ahead and delete this right and if i reload this you're gonna see we get uh, rid of that so first of all it just assigns us a cookie if the user is not defined it uh, creates an id for that cookie and adds the flag content right so we need to somehow extract this particular thing all right so this is my object where my blueprints would be stored right and as i go ahead and uh, create create these particular blueprints you can see that it gets me the raw body you know it tries to um parse the body here and that is where the problem lies so you're gonna see that it's all fine and looks good but the problem arises in this low dash library default steve so if you go ahead and google about this particular thing default steep um low dash vulnerability you're gonna find that there was a prototypal vulnerability uh this one would be a better one and actually yeah it, it it's been quite a while for this vulnerability to be there so you could see that you could actually uh, pollute the prototype of the JavaScript object. Now, if you are, if you know about JavaScript a bit, you you know that JavaScript works on a prototypal inheritance model. That is, one object can have its prototype set to another object, and then that particular pro object would have its prototype set to another object. So, if you try to query a property on a single object, if that object has that property, it's okay. Otherwise, it just delegates that to its prototypal chain, right? So the way to actually solve this problem in Lodash, what happens is that if you use this particular um, default steep or merge, what happens is that whatever you write here could technically pollute the prototypal chain if you're using a syntax, something like this, right? So what, what essentially we want to do is we want to make this content flag public true right because it, if it is public then it would get shown on this particular home page that is right here but by default it's public undefined and in fact it's not even public undefined it, it does not really exist right so if you just try to do user dot blueprints and whatever your id is right and if you try to do uh you know public on this since it cannot find it here it would just assume it undefined and it will return false but what you could do is you could actually set the prototypal chain of the uh of this particular object to have the public property set to true 
So what that means is if you do not explicitly specify public false or public true here, what would happen is that it would delegate to it its prototypal chain and then we are basically in control, right? So the thing to do here was that you first have to realize that this is prototypal pollution model. Secondly, just go ahead and intercept this particular request. You could see that right here, if I just go ahead and write 3333 and create a blueprint, we're gonna get, uh, or let me just try it one more time. And this time I'll just preserve log, create a blueprint. You see, we make a post request to slash make, right? And I'm just gonna copy the fetch request of this particular thing and paste it right here. So you see that in the body, we are passing a JSON object with the content of this and public as false right now instead of this what we could do is we could just stringy stringify and pass this constructor payload right so we're gonna pass this constructor payload what it's going to do it's it's going to set the prototype and public to be true so now what happens is that when it tries to display here inside the let's see inside this particular template you're gonna see that it starts with if blueprints exist that is that is true now if it is public then we want to display it otherwise we don't want to display it so right here what happens is when it asks JavaScript whether this particular blueprint is public or not what happens is since the flag blueprint does not has a public attribute with, the, with it, that is it does not have public false associated with this, it fall back, falls back to its prototypal chain, which we are now polluting by setting the public to true. So once we do that, that's pretty much it. So once we make that request, we get a blueprint ID and we could just go back to our home page because we have already polluted the prototypal chain. And you can see that once we do that, we get the flag just like we want to. So yeah, that's pretty much it for um, this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you then in the next one.